This is a response to the National Planning Commission's video regarding the nine challenges facing South Africa and the subsequent invitation to get feedback from the entire country. From us, a company called Afrigis. Afrigis is a geographic and communications solutions provider. We are passionate about South Africa and the potential our beautiful nation and country holds. We want to be part of the plan, but more importantly how to turn it into a reality for us and the generations to come. Founded in 1997, we have been intricately involved in both elections and census, as well as several other government and corporate projects. We have seen the benefits spatial intelligence can bring. We have been involved in elections since 1997, working behind the scenes to enable geographic data and technology solutions, from web-based maps to the printed maps at voting stations. When it comes to census, we've been involved in both the 2001 and 2011 projects, demarcating EAs, printing maps and providing mobile phone-based solutions. Similar involvements in the departments of transport, housing, education, health and many others have given us a vast amount of experience and an intricate understanding of where spatial information or GIS combined with appropriate technology can help. Our mission is to create geographic information and communication solutions, custom-made for business and the consumer. How does this help South Africa? Let me introduce you to the Spatial Information Strategy Framework. Over the years, we have developed a variety of processes and methodologies that allow the successful application of spatial information, that means maps or GIS, and related technologies into big organizations. This is the Spatial Information Strategy Framework and we believe it is part of the plan to address the nine challenges. When looking at any development in a country, there are typically five elements. Planning, design, implementation, operations and monitoring. As a country, we believe we get the answer to the planning question close to correct. We get the answer to what we should be doing. But it is the implementation of the what, the how, that brings the challenges. Creating solutions that can be implemented, be it a construction project or writing a software program. In both instances, even if we get the how right, we need to operate the plan that was implemented and monitor that it is done correctly. We need to report on the implemented project and gather the relevant statistics to monitor and improve. In the spatial information strategy, we deal with business objectives, geographic data sets, functional solutions, and best practices. These are balanced with one another and one can imagine a scale with the business objectives, the pivot on which it hinges. In the case of the NPC, the business objectives are the nine challenges which we relate to datasets and solutions. To recap, the challenges as outlined by the NPC are poor education outcome, high unemployment, a high disease burden, a divided society, public services that fail the poor, parts of the country are locked in a poverty cycle, infrastructure is a challenge, we abuse our natural resources, and corruption bedevils a lot of what we do. How do we apply the spatial information strategy framework? We go through a balancing act of reviewing best practice, looking at the geographic and other data sets that enable specific questions related to the objectives, and finally build the solutions that enable them. These solutions can then be listed and prioritized into a roadmap. In GIS, they usually relate to data, software, hardware, processes and people. The solutions are literally the gears that make the whole engine work. They bring together the data sets with the objectives they enable and validate this against best practice. Integrated databases and the exchange of information is a reality in our current civilization, although it remains a challenge. The framework is based around spatial information. It suggests the use of an interlinked set of spatial databases that uses geography to align decision makers to a single roadmap, which allows for integrated decision making. It is easy to visualize and understand if we look at a map. It paints a thousand words. In essence, many of the challenges relate to demand for services or products and the supply of those and the resulting deficit or surplus. To effectively supply one has to understand demand both in size and location. Let me use examples from the healthcare, human settlements and education environments and put them into our scale. On healthcare, 
the challenges we want to solve are to improve access and relieve the disease burden. To do this, the data sets we will need are related to the sick, the demand, and the clinics and hospitals, the supply. We then want to map this information out and make decisions. We would need to know where the sick people find themselves, what illnesses they have, and then we would need a solution where we can view this information either inside a hospital or clinic or on a desktop of an individual that is responsible for the planning. In our current day and age, the use of mobile technologies, such as cell phones, provide an immense opportunity for data capturing and citizen interaction. Imagine capturing some of the demand or supply information and feeding it directly into the planning systems of a local or central government and facilitating cooperation. For example, imagine nurses using mobile phones to upload the number of TB cases treated in a day or the number of open hospital beds and having that data available on a map immediately. Solutions like these would give us an indication of what is going on out in the field where the rubber hits the road, and aligning that with our planning processes. Have a look at our Census Progress Watch video on YouTube, where we use similar technology to monitor the progress of census enumerators and their submissions on a daily basis. The next example would be around human settlements. The challenges we want to address would include unevenness of public services, high unemployment rate, access to education. Some of the data sets involved would include an indication of demand, the housing need, location of clinics and schools, and their proximity to settlements. These data sets will once again be captured and analysed in a geographical context. Imagine asking and rewarding citizens on a national scale to pinpoint their housing needs using something as simple as a please call me, so we can invest in capital projects in the correct areas linking the basic infrastructures with human settlements. The analysis of the existing infrastructure and the demand would then point out where the requirements are. These can then be quantified and prioritised and included in the larger planning process. All these solutions will take us further toward answering the question where and allowing government departments to cooperate on an aligned consolidated roadmap of activities. The final example deals with addressing the education challenge. Some data sets required would be around delivery of supplements, location of schools and deployment of teachers, all in the context of the correct age groups. So we need to know where are scholars, their distribution through the country and the timetables they operate to. We will ask questions like, how do they get to school? What does the learner transport in a specific area look like? And then we analyse these within a functional solution. By using different layers of information to pinpoint the demand and supply, we will better meet their needs. One can only imagine the improvement of results if we manage to link supply with demand. By asking these questions, you can see we are integrating the departments of education, transport, as well as institutions such as Statistics South Africa. The key words leading us to success will be integration and cooperation. Functional solutions in the context of these objectives would be rooted in a common base map and a set of systems that integrate the questions and answers across borders of departments, personalities and access to information. Solutions such as these will allow active citizens to interact with a capable state, providing valuable information to leadership in the development context. Our challenges as a country are not new and we know the solutions are out there. A solution to the challenge on a national scale requires a coordinated effort and we will be strongly aided if the powers that be all agree on the answer to where. By doing so, they make decisions from a common point of departure which will allow them to arrive at the same or similar roadmap with the same priorities in the nine objectives. It has been an immense privilege to be involved in the groundbreaking projects mentioned. We are excited to integrate what we've learned from those into the bigger plan. Thank you for your time. We are eager to help and we look forward to receiving your response. May the plan for 2030 become a reality for all of us and may we leave a legacy of prosperity for future generations.